Blessings and peace to you, First Church community, on this day immediately following Resurrection Sunday. I feel incredibly blessed and grateful to have the opportunity to be gathered here, albeit virtually through the YouTube platform, to be able to share a brief devotional reflection and a word uh, that can carry us and follow us through our weeks. Uh, if you haven't heard yet, we're calling this session Manna in the Morning. And if you did not know, uh, the term manna is a reference to the Hebrew Bible and the Old Testament in the book of Exodus. Uh, when the Israelites were on their 40 year wilderness journey and God was providing manna, i.e. the bread from heaven, um, to sustain them through their journeys. And manna is something that was also ultimately put in the Ark of the Covenant to be a symbolic representation of the covenantal uh, blessing and uh, bond between God and the people. So this manna, we hope and pray, will be able to nourish us and be on our hearts and minds as we continue to go throughout our weeks. So the scripture that we have for today is from the Gospel of John, uh, beginning chapter 20, verses 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the religious leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him that we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side and stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told them, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The word of the Lord. I think this scripture is really important, especially for a time such as this, because many of us have not ever spent uh, post-resurrection or post-Easter Sunday time in such conditions where we are quarantined, we are cut off from our friends, from our family, um, from our jobs, from our routines. So despite the fact that Resurrection and Resurrection Sunday is a joyous event, it is a beautiful event, um, a symbol of new hope, of new life, a restoration of resurrection. But sometimes uh, I can imagine that as we go forward in the coming weeks, it may feel that that resurrection does not necessarily line up with where we may be in our personal lives. I think that's really important because that relates to where Thomas is at this time. The, the disciples post-resurrection undoubtedly were experiencing profound feelings of grief, of despair, of, of desperation. And Jesus, uh, in an act of grace and love for his people and his disciples, appeared to them in that grief. And after he appeal, appears to the first disciple, he chooses to appear to Thomas, who traditionally has been painted as being a doubter, but I think it's better to look at Thomas as a skeptic because Thomas was a very noble, a very responsible disciple, one who actually uh, uh, spent a lot of time motivating the disciples to do things that they otherwise may have been afraid to do. Uh, Thomas said at one point in John chapter 11, let us also go that we may die with him. When they, the disciples were trying to keep Jesus from going to Bethany to raise Lazarus from the dead, because of the danger in that area from those who had previously tried to stone him. So Thomas, as we see, had a lot, a lot of courage, a, a lot of strength. But in this situation here, um, Thomas, asked, Thomas is asking to, to see the wounds, but not only see them, but put his hands in them. And it's really insignificant as well, because the post-resurrected Christ is not a person who was fully healed. The post-resurrected Christ still had his wounds and they weren't scarred, but they were still open. And Jesus appearing to the disciples to Thomas in this specific case and allowing him to put his hands in his wounds is a, is a symbolic representation of the closeness that Jesus is willing 
uh, uh, to embrace with us, how close he's willing to come to us and how close he's allowing us to come to him, especially in a time post-resurrection, as Jesus knew that the disciples were probably very skeptical and doubtful and, and confused, having heard all these magnificent things about the Messiah, about the Lord, and then to see him die in such a way. Um, there had had to be drastic circumstances for them to believe. So Jesus appearing to Thomas is also an act of grace because uh, he he doesn't he doesn't chastise Thomas for asking these questions. He doesn't doubt Thomas. He doesn't um, scold Thomas. He meets Thomas where Thomas is. And many of us during this time may feel as though we might be in a place where we are still. Um, embracing feelings of confusion as we move throughout these weeks dealing with the quarantine and the, the, the tragedy of the COVID-19 outbreak and pandemic. Um, and I believe that it's our responsibility uh, to be able to try to maintain some sort of balance and, and, and um, belief by trying to come to Jesus, by trying to embrace Jesus, because we always know that when we take one step towards the Lord, the Lord takes two steps towards us, if not 10. Um, and sometimes for us, we may even need to feel like we need to put those our hands in, in those wounds. Um, others may not feel the need to do that. But um, ultimately, I think the purpose of this passage is is God's love and God's care for us during times of grief and God's willingness to come to the most. Excuse me for God's willingness to come closer to us than we've ever been than we've ever had before. Um, so. I hope and I pray and I wish that we can continue to carry the resurrected Christ on our hearts as we continue to move through our weeks and to know the nearness of Jesus, the presence of Jesus in everything that we do, and to be reminded that we may fall into moments of of, of skepticism. We may fall into moments of, of confusion when it comes to reconciling our faith with everything that's going on, but the Lord calls us to remember before everything else that he is near, that God is near, and blessed are those who have not yet seen, but have believed. And for those of us who have seen, or those of us who wish to see, we still all um, hope that we can come to a place where we can believe and continue to believe despite the challenges that we face. So beloved, I, I, I thank you for tuning in today for this session of Manna in the Morning from our scripture from the Gospel of John. And I pray blessings and, and peace and tranquility on your weeks. I pray that the Spirit of God may walk with you and, and talk with you and guide you and console you and heal you in all that you do. And I look forward uh, to uh, tuning back in next week for our second session. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at carlisle at firstchurchcambridge.org. And if you want to talk about the scripture or anything else, um, I am available. So. Thank you so much. Peace and blessings to you and your family. God bless.